This is the Halftime Show with Omar Aduri on Pulse 995. Salam and welcome to the Halftime Show with Omar Aduri. I am your host, coming everything sport international and local hope you're having a blessed day wherever you're tuned in around the world whether it's 95 fm pulse95 radio.com youtube live yes that's right i said it live on youtube pulse95 radio or even on my instagram shout out to everyone who's here because it's episode 200 in the building right now and we're going to reflect on how 2020 has been to halftime to pulse95 and to all my people back who are supporting and following from day one. On segment one, we're talking about the highlights of 200 year 2020, being outside the studio, the lows, the highs, and what I would like it to be remembered for. On segment two, it is your segment. I sent out a question to everyone who follows the halftime show and I asked you, if you could put the host in the seat, what would you ask him? And I'll tell you now, we got some very juicy questions for you. So this time I'm going to let you take charge of that segment and I'm going to be in the seat and you're going to ask, ask me your questions and I'm going to have that in the fire round. On segment three, Verstappen wins the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. AJ beats um, Pulev to set up the much anticipated fight and the UFC fight of the year ends in a draw. And also, as we're talking, the Champions League draw is in the background. So I'll be giving you that in segment four on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse 95. This is the halftime show with Omar Adouri. Oh, on Pulse 95. Yes, we are back. Episode 200 on the halftime show on Pulse 95. Thank you for spending this hour with me. The only place to be at three with me, Omar Duri on Pulse 95 with my man RR in the background at the studio, making this happen live. What's going on, my people? Hope you're having a great day. All right. So first segment, highlights of 200 episodes. Now we did, we did have a challenging year this year. It wasn't a normal year. So we had a couple of setbacks. So we'll start off with the setbacks and end up on the positives of this year. I think the setbacks was definitely having the challenge to be able to you know adapt to first of all producing shows editing shows these guys at pulse 95 ray rr vikas you name them sama they do a lot of great work in the background they they make sure we sound good they make sure everything's on point and i'll tell you one thing when we had to be forced into lockdown we had to learn all of that <laughs> and that is not easy so a lot of respect went to that i think a lot of the presenters panicked i was one of them thinking how are we gonna do this man how are we gonna do what they do the way they do it how they do it and i was definitely one person that thought boy i've only been in this radio game for a minute i haven't been in this radio game for that long and what am i gonna do now we went into lockdown because of covid we had to learn all this stuff so these guys were getting phone calls left right and center saying what do we do, man? Like, how do we make it sound like it's on radio? So we had to kind of learn how to produce our own show. So I think that was one of the biggest challenges at the time on how to edit, produce, normalize, and do all that good stuff they do in the background. So that was tough. The halftime show was on hold. <laughs> that was probably the lowest point for me as a presenter when the halftime show was on hold during COVID because... As you know, the Halftime Show covers a lot of topics like mental health, physical health, gut health, and sports. I had to work on all of those things because I had nothing to talk about. I had nothing to be able to share with you guys, and it was on hold. Now, it wasn't on hold for that long, thankfully. It was on hold for about a month. That was one of the longest months out there. So those were the challenges we faced, you know, producing and presenting on the Halftime Show for 200 episodes. Now, the pluses man to be able to speak to all these people around the world i'm talking florin from new york who wakes up at stupid o'clock in the morning <laughs> just to be able to tune into the halftime show you know adil new jersey debo florida subi denver see i know them by name hatem you've got carson you got all these people that can be anywhere in the world and they happen to share that time with me. Is there anything better than that? Absolutely not. And by the way, that's telling you people from outside, there's three hours, four hours, nine hours, 12 hours difference with these people. The love that I get from people here is phenomenal. And I'll tell you something, I'll tell you a funny story. 
someone who just doesn't usually listen to the show or watch the show he stopped me at the gym this guy called is called muhammad and he shouted <laughs> he shouted at me cookies he just shouted okay and i turned around looked at this guy i was like you watch the show and he's like yeah man and it's because Omnia Saleh from Future Talk. Whenever she comes in during the breaks, she comes in during the breaks and she gives me cookies. And because of her, she's got her own part on the show. So those are one of my pluses on the show. The fact we can reach people. I think the biggest plus for me from the halftime show is being able to talk about topics that a lot of people for a long time have had the stigma about. And I think this is something that wasn't planned. It's something that came out organically. And I'm so grateful for everyone who you know has messaged me privately or tuned in on the show based on the topics we've spoken about from mental health mental fitness gut health all the important stuff that we mentioned here so thank you very much to everyone who's shown love episode 200 coming up next if you wondered if you can take over the halftime show it's coming up after the break because i'm answering your questions that you fired in and i'm going to be in the hot seat on the fire round on the only place to be at three the halftime show on Pulse 95. This is the halftime show with Omar Maduri on Pulse 95. Salam and welcome back to the halftime show with Omar Maduri. Man, 200 episodes, show 200. It's only right I leave it in your hands. So, this is what I did the other day. After episode 199, I said to you guys, if you could have me on the fire round, what would you do? And you know what? With some great ideas from Safe, Masoud, and everyone who said, Omar, let's get you in the hot seat. So I said, all right, you know what? Fire in some questions and I'll answer them on the halftime show. And that's exactly what you guys did. So we're going to dedicate this episode to the fire round. Ah, uh, switch up some music for me for the fire round, please. Here we go, guys. All right. So these questions came from you. <laughs> these questions came from you. I can't hear myself. All right, here we go. Tea or coffee? <laughs> coffee. Reading or watching a movie? Depends what movie. I'd say movie. Football or boxing? Ooh, football. Uh, United or Arsenal? Funny, Raj. Obviously, Arsenal. Ocean or mountain? Ocean. Sweet or savory? Savory. Uh, if you could manage any team in Europe or America and it was a women's team, who would it be? Denver. Pineapples on pizza. Yes. Pineapples on pizza. That's, ain't that right, Ara? Yeah, yeah. I don't normally have it, but I'll say pineapples on pizza. Most memorable football moment. Uh, Ghana versus Argentina. 3-2 to Ghana. Me being part of the World Cup setup. Brilliant. My favorite moment. Ronaldo or Messi? Brazilian Ronaldo. Pele or Maradona? Maradona. Uh, what got you into football? My uh, granddad, rest his soul, and my uncle Saleh. How do you reset by starting every day fresh? What would you be doing if you weren't in the sports industry? Uh, music, definitely. Don't worry, not singing because Ara sings. I don't sing. Not singing. I would produce music for sure. I'd definitely be in the music industry. What actions would you take for a talented athlete considering leaving their career? Uh, I would. I would listen to them. I'd actually try and sit down and understand what's going on with them first because you can't give them advice if you don't know what's going on. Uh, how do you help the people you coach overcome their obstacles and limitations? I think it comes down to understanding again when it, with, with this question. Um, you have to understand what the problem is and it will take time. So I think when I coach normally my, my people, um, I normally have to try and sit and do a lot of listening. That's, that's the only way I can move forward with them. Right, okay. <coughs> Excuse me. Next question. Here we go. You see, I got it on my sheet. Um, being a coach or manager or technical director at a club, which one would you prefer? Manager. Uh, which Premier League team would you support other than Arsenal? Oh, that's a hard one to support. What do I say, Ray? I mean, Ara, sorry. I keep saying my name is not Ray. My name's Ara. Um, I'd probably say team to support. Uh, ass. I don't even know who I can support about that. Carson, mental health or psychological health? Mental health. Uh, Mustafa, <laughs> shawarma with fries, yes or no? Yes, Mustafa, you gotta have the fries in the shawarma. You can't 
not have the fries in the shawarma. Favorite partner at RBO. Right, this is when I know it's getting tasty. Uh, okay, so on Friday, it's Terry. On Monday, it's Kareen. On Wednesday, it's Ayman and Fahima. Uh, on Sunday, it's Mustafa, Lulu and Meg. On Tuesday, it's Ish, Michelle and Jojo. On Thursday, it's Marvish, Rachel, Nimmer and Mo. Did I answer your question? <laughs> Zion, favorite person interview 2020. Oh, that's a hard one. Favorite person interviewed. Oh, I don't know. I have to get back down. I'll think about that one, Zion. Great, great question, though. Um, Maria, if you could save one of two people, would it be Ian Wright or Zinedine Zidane? Oh, that's a hard one as well. I mean, Ian Wright's unks, isn't it? He's an uncle. So I'd have to say Ian Wright. Uh, Terry, if you could do one exercise for the rest of time, what would it be? Turkish get-up, you know. Um, essay, one fitness or nutrition myth? Weights make you bulky. Um coach would you rather coach next to Bielsa for a game or play for Arsenal for a game oh that's a hard one play for Arsenal for a game uh well would you rather be the world's strongest man or fastest man oh these are some hard questions fastest man uh would you rather <laughs> Would you rather, here's, here's one for you, Ara, you like this one. Would you rather fight a horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? <laughs> I'll take, I'll take the, <laughs> sorry, I'll take the um, horse-sized duck. I think I'll definitely take that person on. Uh, <laughs> oh my God, this is killing me. Um, Nedwa, top three guests on the show. Oh man, you guys are killing me with this. I think, um, I think, that, to be honest, I had, had a lot of great guests, but I think uh, some of the ones I was really surprised that came on the show um, was Jim Quick was one of them. I think he was he was brilliant. Um, John Terry was another surprising one. And I, and I also like, um, there's someone that I brought on the show that not many people know. His name is Mohammed Sadiq. He actually organizes games locally uh, just for friends and family. It's a huge community. I think having him on the show was, was brilliant. Um, Okay, who else have I got? Kulathum, what what do you enjoy about what you do when it comes to coaching? Very good question, Kulathum. I think being able to help people achieve something that they didn't think they could achieve. I think that's one of the main things. And sometimes even coaching without even feeling like it's my job or it's a role, could be with friends, could be with family, could be someone doesn't really know me. I think that's very self-fulfilling. So to answer your question, that would be something else that I would have. I know there's more questions coming in here. We have reached the end of this segment, but I will answer the rest of your questions after the break on the only place to be at three, the Halftime Show on Pulse 95. This is the Halftime Show with Omar Adouri. On, on Pulse 95. Yes, we are back on the Halftime Show, episode 200. Thank you for everyone who's keeping me company on the Instagram live at Omar Duri, And also for those who are watching on YouTube eventually uh, on Pulse95 Radio. Thank you. Ah, I just gave me the look. Thank you for tuning in. It is episode 200 and we're having a lot of fun here today on the show. Man, the questions are still coming in and I'm getting a lot of grief after segment two. And if you're just tuning in and wondering where you can catch our shows, you can catch our podcasts on Apple, Spotify, SoundCloud, Anangami, or even thanks to Super Mario and Gabby, they upload the episodes onto YouTube so you can watch them fresh in the comfort of your own home whenever you're ready. So, hey, listen, a lot of things have been happening after segment two. I'm still getting grief for having pineapple on pizza. Now, I just said it's okay to have it. Do I order it? Not really, but I used to. But then again, here we don't discriminate. Vegan, pineapple on pizza, french fries and shawarma. Whatever makes it happen for you guys, we don't discriminate. So yeah, there's something. Um, who else watched the AJ versus Pula fight? Finally, we can have the setup for the heavyweight Titanic match between Tyson Fury and Anthony Joshua. Now, Pulev did try and get into AJ's mind. He got into his face, he showered at him and everything. But hey, you know, at the end of the day, when you're quiet, it's the quiet ones you have to worry about. So that was something I enjoyed watching. It's about 3 a.m. here. And seeing that, you know, I've got so much on my hands. <laughs> Excuse me, perfect timing. Um, I, it was only right I watched the fight. 
great performance by AJ. Took it the distance, um, well, almost the distance, but knocked him out, which is great. So that surely should have him set up against Fury. Now, for the F1 fans, I'm sure you watched Verstappen win the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. He led from start to finish. The 23-year-old Dutchman is on a streak. It's his second win of the season, and he followed the stop, medium, hard strategy, which was very similar to Hamilton as well, but also managed to get the victory and end up 2020 on a high so looking at that now Mercedes you know should be flying and also Verstappen should be on you know what's been a very challenging year for all of us had to be sent a message on the Instagram AJ of Fury man good question visually I'd say AJ performance wise I'd say Fury I think Fury is too skilled I know people are going to be at me because obviously AJ is a Londoner from Watford and uh, and I should be you know supporting him. Listen, AJ is an incredible athlete. I think he's he's very well equipped. And there were questions whether he could last, you know, you know the full distance when it comes down to a heavy, you know, heavyweight clash like Fury. Now I have to say, performance-wise, Tyson Fury is one of the most skillful, if not the most skillful heavyweight on the planet. Nim is asking me, AJ, are you sick? I think AJ takes that one. I don't think Yusuke can get away from AJ's power, especially the uppercut. You saw the way that AJ threw those uppercuts. It gave me that that feeling, you know, that Klitschko feeling when AJ threw those punches in. So that's something that I would have to say, you know, I definitely, definitely put. But let's hope, because even when he was asked the question and Eddie Hearn was there next to him, I know Eddie Hearn wanted to make that fight. But AJ wasn't given away too much after that. Now, maybe on the YouTube clips afterwards, you'll see him say, bring on Fury. I think he has to say that he said he wants to fight in six months maybe sooner well fury better get on that treadmill because he's gonna have to definitely get into shape for that knowing he's gonna be up against the power of aj in ufc the fight of the year and the round of the year goes to davidson versus moreno if you haven't watched the fight what a fight it was mexico versus brazil in what turned out to be an outstanding fight fight fans that is the fight you have to watch if you're into ufc and you're into mixed martial arts that was a slugfest loved watching that and especially seeing the way moreno was you know number one versus the champion contender wise great fight it didn't disappoint tony ferguson did disappoint watching that it was very disappointing i expected more from him but the moreno fight was outstanding it ended in a majority draw but that means uh davidson still uh you know retains the title but of course for those that don't know he was in hospital with um a sort of a virus until 2 a.m leading up to that fight that day that's why he was in tears afterwards but i think the rematch will definitely be one of those which will be very much anticipated along with conor mcgregor versus dustin poirier in january fight fans there's a lot to look forward to and listen, coming up next, the Champions League draw has just been announced. Before we before we take a break, um, we've had some sad news that Gerard Houllier has passed away. Uh, so respect to his family. A uh, former Liverpool coach uh, passed away today. So on a high, we're going to be talking about the Champions League draw coming up after the break on the only place to be at three, the halftime show on Pulse ninety five. This is the halftime show. With Omar Adouri. Yes, we are back on the Halftime Show, episode 200 on Pulse95 Radio. Thank you very much for making this show happen. And that means everyone is in the background, the Pulse95 family. I wish I could be in the studio. But we're making the most out of what we have at the moment, the current situation. It's half full versus half empty. And right now, I'm having to appreciate what's going on in the world right now as we speak. Thank you for everyone who sent the questions in. Segment two was based on your questions on the fire round. Make sure you check out the show if you've just jumped in now. It's been great. And also, guys, I think the reason why, and I'm going to say this wholeheartedly, the reason why I, I've chosen to work during this time is because you guys have made it worthwhile. So thank you very, 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 very much. Some of the questions have caused uproar, like Erige's question, pineapple on pizza. And also, uh, Mustafa almost trying to get me in trouble with my training partners, all of them, by asking me who's my favorite one. So a lot of good questions. As you know, in the background, while we were started this show, the 
uh, Champions League draw just came out. So if you are watching the show and you're wondering who's playing, because you can't rely on Nimmer or Jimbo, because they come up with some interesting stuff. <laughs> Munchen Gladbach versus Manchester City. Barcelona versus PSG. We were waiting for that to happen. Neymar versus Messi. Atlanta versus Real Madrid. Can Zidane pass Gasparini? Atletico versus Chelsea. Chelsea fans, how do you feel about playing against Diego Costa again? Leipzig versus Liverpool. That's a very good draw. Will Upamecano join Liverpool before then? Lazio versus Bayern Munich. Bayern Munich, you know, looking very, very tasty at the moment. Porto versus Juventus and Sevilla versus the young Dortmund. That's just what happened right now. And uh, who's who's going to win the Champions League, guys? 4 2 1 5 with the Salat or do or slide into my DMs at Omar Duri. Who is going to win the Champions League following the draw that just happened now? Shout out to my boy Hashim as well, who's uh, showing mad love on the Instagram and saying what a show episode 200 has been. Almas thinks PSG is going to win. I'm sure Karine is happy with that. I think she's going to be very happy with PSG winning. Mustafa says it's not going to happen. Hatem, who's going to win the Champions League? Masoud is here in the building as well. Guys, I have to say that, you know, there's been a lot of ups and downs this year. But I am so grateful that we've managed to spend it together. <coughs> Perfect timing, excuse me. Uh, and here... Uh, don't worry, I'm at home by myself uh, and here. And also, guys, if you are watching on Instagram Live, screenshot this and send it to us on Pulse95 Radio. Episode 200 is here and you've been a huge part of it. What's up, Fahima, Terry, Kareen, Kasim, Hatim, and everyone else who hit, is here on the Instagram Live with me on Pulse95 Radio. We are reaching full time on the Halftime Show. Ah, oh, that's when you drop the whistle. <laughs> There you go. RR is DJing for me in the background. Thank you, RR, for being with me here on episode 200. I won't forget this, my bro. I appreciate you guys. And for everyone else who's tuned in, thank you so much for spending the hour with me. We'll be back same time every Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, 3 to 4, on the only place to be at 3, the Halftime Show on Pulse 95. If you liked this episode of the Halftime Show, drop a like and subscribe. 95. Be sure to follow us on Instagram for all our daily updates and top stories.